Hallelujah. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. He is wonderful. He's magnificent. He's almighty. All powerful. Is there anybody here? I know you came to celebrate 24 years, but we came to worship a God that sits high and looks low and is concerned about his people. He has given us everything that we need. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here that just wants to celebrate God for his loving kindness and his tender mercy? You didn't get here 24 years all by yourself. It was because God was God. And we thank him today that he didn't leave us where he found us. Ain't nobody talking to me. He didn't leave us on the corner where he found us. He didn't leave us in that bed that he found us. He didn't leave us on the street corner where he found us. He didn't leave us in the dope dealer's house where he found us. He didn't leave us in the prostitution where he found us. says great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and it goes on to say Rev. Pastor Bishop Cisco let everything oh y'all ain't come to have no church let everything that have breath praise the Lord Let me just say this. Contrary to popular belief, it was not the alarm clock that woke you up this morning. It was his grace and his mercy. And what I like about it, the Bible tells me that I got new mercy. I'm not resting on yesterday's mercy, I woke up with new mercy. Is there anybody here that's thankful to a God that isn't giving you leftover mercy? to be here on this morning and let me just say there are not many people that I would leave my pulpit for but there is one in the house that required my attention by the name of Bishop Wanda Cisco. And when she calls, I will answer. Hallelujah. Take your seats if you can, because 
I'm from the country, and we do know a little protocol. First, give an honor to God. <laughs> Who is the head of my life? In him I move and I breathe and I have my being. Giving honor to the shepherd of this house. To my provincial bishop. The bishop of the mid-Atlantic region of Global United Fellowship. Bishop Wanda Sisko. Can we give glory? and honor where honor is due. And it is not easy to be a pastor. And I, I know it's not easy to be a bishop, but your bishop walks with integrity. And she leads the way for those of us that are following her. So I just want to stand publicly and say how much I appreciate you for being a trailblazer in your own right. And um, to the Beyond the Veil family, I give God glory for you for standing and supporting your bishop. For the past 24 years. And I want to honor my executive pastor who did not let me cross that Woodrow Wilson Bridge alone. <laughs> Reverend Yolanda Gant is our executive pastor. I will not be before you long. I am. One of the things that my grandmama told me, Elder De uh, Tonise, is that know your place. I'm just the appetizer. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We're going over to celebrate with his grace, Bishop Neil C. Ellis. So I'm just going to give you a little bit and I'm going on, I'm going on with you so I can be fed. But there is a word from the Lord. If you will turn in your Bibles with me to the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation, chapter 3. Revelation, chapter 3, starting at verse 14. To the angel of the church of Lady Osea, these are the words of the Amen the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. If you'll just give me just a few minutes, I'm going to preach on the subject, preaching a hot gospel to a lukewarm church. Preaching a hot gospel to a lukewarm church. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In 2015, there was a movie entitled Fifty Shades of Grey. It was based on a book with the same name. It was notable for its explicit scenes. The series sold over 90 million copies worldwide 
and has been translated into 52 languages and set the record as the fastest selling paperback of all time. The movie got poor reviews, but that didn't stop millions of viewers from going to see the movie. The content of the movie was graphic with lust, green and greed, and pornography. But the sad part about it, Bishop Sisko, it wasn't just a movie watched by non-Christians. It was viewed by non-Christians and Christians alike. Why was it so popular? Even though the movie was based on the glorification of abuse, our world constantly is living in a gray area. We're neither black or white, hot or cold, have no moral compass that leads us to a godly conclusion. Right is now wrong, and wrong is now right. We live in a world now where evangelicals who used to be known for their moral judgment now have twisted their values for political gain rather than standing for what is holy. We live in a world where the government is telling, what, telling the church what's right rather than the church leading the way. They telling us when we can say Jesus and how to be politically correct in our prayers. Ain't nobody talking to me. Uh, taking Christ out of Christmas so we don't offend nobody. T taking the Bible out of context so they can do what they want in spite of what the Bible says. I'm talking about a lukewarm church. And people want a middle of the road existence, not taking sides. Politicians base their platform on which group will get them the most votes. They say what the world wants them to say, but when they get in office, they get spiritual amnesia and flip-flop on the issue because there's no longer a moral value in your word. A handshake is no longer a binding contract. Oh, but don't, don't, don't fret because when the world looks at the church, they get confused because they see Christians doing the same thing they doing. Coming to church on Sunday, looking churchy, but then you see them cussing on Monday, gambling on Tuesday, gossiping on Wednesday, twerking on Thursday, ain't nobody talking to me. We as the church are standing in judgment and want to criticize what the world is doing, but we can't tell the church from the world. I'm talking about a lukewarm church. People come to church, and instead of getting meat that they need to sustain them, convict them, and change them, we serve them similac. I ain't talking about your church. I want to be invited back. I'm talking about the church. Even when we see white evangelicals now trying to tell the black church what's wrong with them. Even when you turn on the radio, you have to look down at the dial to make sure you're on a gospel station. Because gospel artists now sound like secular artists. But the truth of the matter is, they're more interested in making money than sharing the gospel. We used to be able to hear music that would touch our souls and lead us to a place of worship. Everybody wants to shout, but don't nobody want to worship. I'm talking about a lukewarm church. And now we have Christian leaders more concerned about buying jets than feeding the homeless. More concerned about selling books than saving souls. More concerned about preaching engagements than getting our kids off the street. Oh, but we can't get upset with the world. Because the church don't even look like the church anymore. Preachers are not preaching sin because they don't want to offend nobody. Don't want to call out sin because you might offend the tither. Don't want to call out sin because you're afraid they might vote you out.
We have preachers now who are more interested in numbers and money instead of preaching Christ. We don't talk about shacking up no more. We calling it living together for economic reasons. Instead of calling sex out of wedlock fornication, we calling it the new generation. We're afraid to tackle the mess in the life of the people because we're so busy trying to keep the people on the rolls. But the last time I looked, God was still God, and he was still in control. Do I have any witnesses this morning? Well, here in the book of Revelations, John the Revelator had a responsibility to tell the seven churches what Jesus was saying to the church. His job was telling them the state of the union. His job was to reveal the word of God in relationship to where he saw them and what they needed to get in right standing with God. John's job was not to interpret. His job was to report. Our job is not to interpret, but to report what God has already said. Our job is not to make the news, but to report the good news. And like any good Baptist preacher, I'm going to make three points. And I'm going to take my seat. Point number one. Preaching a hot, a hot gospel must be relevant. One who is thrown into the path of a people who are bent on self-destruction must be relevant. He or she must be germane to a grieving generation. Their applications must be appropriate for the aches of the age. Their preaching must be pertinent to the problems of their parishioner. Their sermons must be suited for the situation. And he or she must be apt to apply the logic of God to the discourse of human reasoning. One who is thrown into the path of a perplexed people must be relevant. Anybody knows, any, everyone who occupies a pulpit and who carries the shepherd's staff must be relevant. The Lord God said to Jeremiah, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my word, then they would have turned from their evil ways and from the evil of their doing. If they are not preaching a relevant gospel, they are not relevant to righteousness, they are not germane to grace, and they are not suited for salvation. They are, t they are not tagged for truth telling. They aren't fit to function as a redemptive force in the plan of salvation. They just aren't relevant. But I do submit to you this morning, God still has relevant preachers and bishops Wanda Cisco is a relevant preacher. Point number two. The church preaching a hot gospel is still prevalent. I'm going to say that again. Preaching a hot gospel is still prevalent. Number one, it was relevant. Number two, it's prevalent. The church is still existing, still accepting, and still powerful. The world still looks at the church for an answer. We still have a position of authority and a place in society. We still have the answer for the world today. We are still pow a powerful force in our community, and it's our responsibility to stand in the face of adversity and speak truth to power. A 
prevalent church meets the hurts in the community. A prevalent church meets the needs of the community. And a prevalent church has the voice of the community. A prevalent church hears the cries of the community. We are not a church building, but a church building people. Come on, somebody, and give them praise. And my last and final point, the church is still the church of the amen. So, somebody say, let the church say amen. Revelations 3.14 tells us there is still victory. These are the words of the amen. Amen. So be it. It is done. A declaration of affirmation, of affirmation. Amen is the confirmation. So if amen is the declaration of the one who has the final say, the victory was spoken before the text was written. Amen is an expression of absolute trust and confidence confidence when one believes in God he indicates his faith by amen when God makes a promise the believer's response is amen so be it in the New Testament it's often translated as verily or truly when we pray according to his word and his will that we know God will answer so we close with. And when we conclude a hymn or an anthem of praise, of faith, we conclude it with a. So the, and the word itself is a title of Christ himself. Since these are the words of the word, because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and he is the son of the amen, then the amen was in charge before the church became lukewarm. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and sup with him and him with me. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. It doesn't matter how lukewarm the church might seem. We're still called to preach a hot gospel because the one who is victorious to him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on the throne. Bishop Cisco, continue to preach a hot gospel because one in every three black males today can expect to go to prison compared to one in, in six Latino males and one in every 17 males. Bishop Cisco, continue to preach a hot gospel because there are more black men going to jail than going to college. Continue to preach a hot gospel because 72% of black kids are still being raised by single parents. Continue to preach a hot gospel for places like Sanford, Florida, Baltimore, Maryland, New York City, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Tyson's Corner, Virginia, and cities all over the United States where young men and women are being killed just for being black. Continue to preach a hot gospel because the wages of sin is still death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Bishop Cisco, continue to preach a hot gospel because he's still Elohim, the creator, mighty and strong. He spoke the world into existence. Bishop Cisco, continue to preach a hot gospel because he's still El Shaddai, God Almighty, with ultimate power. Preach a hot gospel because he's still Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who will provide. Preach a hot gospel because he's Jehovah Rapha, the 
one who heals, who can heal our church and our country. Preach a hot gospel, cause he's still El Shalom. He's still Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. And finally, Bishop Cisco, preach a hot gospel, cause Christ is coming back. Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleanse her by washing with the water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle, but holy and blameless. Faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of God. How can we hear without good preaching? And how is one to preach if they have not been sent? Bishop Cisco, keep preaching the word, teaching the word, training from the word, rebuking from the word, talking about the word, walking in the word, living in the word, and the world will go from being lukewarm to a church on fire for him. Matthew 18 through 28, 18 through 20 says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Bishop Cisco, go and preach the word cause it's like fire. Shut up in your bones. Preach till they cry. What must I do to be saved? Preach till the church says amen. Amen. Amen! Amen! So be it! Amen! Very! Amen! Truly! Amen! Preach until the world says! 